All right, we are in Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. And uh, this is, I think the Gospel of Luke is one of the most challenging uh, books in the Bible. And this is an example, another example, like we had in <laughs> chapter 14. But here we go, Luke 16, 1 through 15. Jesus told his disciples, There was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, What shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do, when I lose my, so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their homes. So he called in each of his master's debtors. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? 800 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 400. He, then he said to the second, How much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, Take your bill and make it 800. The master commended the dishonest man, uh, manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of light. I tell you, the world... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. See, it's so confusing to me, I can't even read it. I'm going to start at verse 8 again. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves, so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees, who loved money, heard this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of men, but God knows your hearts. What is highly valued among men is detestable in God's sight. So we have the parable of the shrewd manager. Um, Jesus is telling this parable about a guy who's a bad manager, and then when he realizes he's going to get fired, he cheats the the owner out in order to be able to get in good with these other people and then the conclusion of it basically verse 9 i tell you use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings that's always been confusing as i was reading this i realized i'm kind of assuming onto it a dishonest youth use of worldly wealth because um, you know, obviously you've got the dishonest manager here, so it seems to fit the context. But it doesn't really say that we should be dishonest with that, even though the master commends the dishonest manager. Anyway, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves, so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into etern eternal dwellings. So I guess what we can say with that is, you know, be generous and helpful to people, and uh, that's an indication that you're heart is right <laughs> in the short term superficial things and maybe that will translate then into spiritual things now once we get to verse 10 the rest of it all makes perfect sense to me whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much very simple so do not despise small beginnings do the right thing with the little that you have don't think oh, i'll get my life straightened out when i finally have some legit responsibilities no, you're going to just stay the same. You're, you're learning the habits you learn now, uh, and those are going to continue with you into the future. So be honest now. Do right now. And then when you get more responsibilities, more opportunities, then you'll be ready to go. Uh, and we can't serve both God and money. Can't serve two masters. Now, I believe money makes a great servant, but an evil master... Let the Lord be your master and let money be your servant. Don't serve it. Don't make it tell you what your morality is. 
Don't make it tell you who you can hurt and who, you know, that sort of thing. Don't let money control you in that respect. But, uh, you know, go ahead and use it. You know, make money, save, be smart, be wise financially. That's a good thing. Uh, that'll, that'll set things up better for you because it's not impossible for you to serve God and have money. What you want to do is not serve money because then there will be a conflict in your heart between serving money and serving God. And if you feel that conflict, then you need to realize that, okay, maybe I'm trying to serve both money and God because I'm feeling a pull between the two. Let money serve you. Let God lead you. So there you go. So let's pray to be trustworthy with very little and to be also trustworthy with much. So Heavenly Father, thank you uh, that each one of us, we all have the opportunities, we all have things that we're working with, uh, ways that we can be trustworthy in this life. And so Lord, help us to see those opportunities today as small as they might be or as large as they might be. So Lord, help us to be trustworthy with very little, conscious of that, realizing this is right, this is what you want, and help us also to be trustworthy with much, knowing that this is what you want for us and this is right. So Lord, help us to walk in these ways. In Jesus' name, amen.